In this video, I will quickly explain how to create a direction-based combat system similar to one seen in games like the original Elder Scrolls Arena, the Mountain Blade series, For Honor, and War of the Roses. For those of you who don't know what a direction combat system is, basically the sword will move in the direction that you move your mouse. Even though this idea is simple enough, I couldn't actually find any worthwhile tutorials or explanations on how these systems actually work, so I decided to mess around for a bit and eventually came up with this pretty simple method. Now it's probably worth noting that if you would like to follow this tutorial exactly, you're going to need five basic animations in idle and attacking from every single angle. If you don't have that, you're more than welcome to download the model used in this video as well as many other types of models for free from my website mwesterstudios.com. Let's go ahead and get started then. As you can see I have Unity open with a pretty basic scene here. I have here our first person controller, and there's nothing really special about him. He is a fairly generic FPS controller, although as a child object of the camera, I have here our player arms, and as a child of the arms, under the right hand, I have our space sword game object. Although at this moment, if we go ahead and press play, you can see that nothing really is happening at all. I can't have any controls over the combat or any sort of animation, and the arms are just in a stasis mode of not moving anywhere. And that's not exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and pause our game, and we're going to create first an animator controller. And this we will call player arms. Okay, let's double click it to open it up. And here we can see our animator window. Let's just widen this a little bit. Now it's kind of empty right now, so we actually want to open our arms here. And you can see that I've gone ahead and I've created several different animations for it. Uh, we can actually just select all of them and drag them in. Now we're not going to use them all, so we want to kind of go through these and find the ones that we want. Let's see. No, ah, here we go. The attacking animations. Okay. Open idle and everything else we can just delete. Okay, so by default, you can see that our attack left has been selected to be our default animation. We don't actually want that. We want to set our weapon idle to be the default state. And so let's just organize this a little bit. We'll have our attack right animation here on the right side, our attack left on the left, attack stab will be below, and our attack up on top. Okay, now we need to create several transitions and so for those of you who don't know, this is the state machine that we're creating to handle our animations. So we need to be able to tell it to move and when to move from idle to say our right attacking animation or our stabbing, our up or our left attack. And so we're going to have to have transitions to each of these animations. So just create transition to all of them. And we also need to be able to transition back to our idle after the attack is complete. Okay, now by default, it will have exit time checked. We don't actually want that for all of these. Uh, so whenever we're leaving our idle animation into the attack, we want to uncheck this. However, when we are returning from our attack animation to our idle, we would like to remain having exit time checked. So let's go ahead and go around and uncheck for the ones that we need. Okay. Now that's actually pretty good. Now if we were to play it right now, it would just randomly select and, and go through some of these animations. Uh, but we don't actually want it to just do that randomly. We want it to only happen whenever a certain trigger is pulled. So we're going to come up here and add a trigger. And we will call this first trigger attack up. Let's add another trigger, attack right. And I think you get the idea at this point. So another trigger, attack stab. And our final trigger, you guessed it, attack left. And now we need to come in here to our transition phase and add in a couple of conditions. So we only want to transfer into our attack right whenever the trigger attack right is called. Likewise attack up, we only want to call whenever the trigger is pulled. And so let's go ahead and go around and adjust these other ones as well. Okay, so that's actually it for our animator controller that's ready to go. So we want to make sure to select our player arms here in our hierarchy and drag in our player arms animator controller to select it. Although now if we press play again, 
you'll see a similar action happen of really nothing. And so we have our idle animation that's playing, but at no point are we calling our triggers to determine which attack to play. So let's go ahead and get out of here. And by the way, if by default this doesn't loop the animation, you can fix this by coming into our player arms prefab, selecting the weapon idle animation, going into edit, coming down and checking loop time, and then apply. I've already done that. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a script, C sharp, and call this attack manager and open it up in Visual Studio. Now that we're here in Visual Studio, we're going to start by removing our start function. We won't be using it at all. And we're going to create a variable, public animator, player animator. Okay, now in our update, we're going to check if input.getMouseButtonDown zero. So if our player pr presses the left mouse button, well, then we want to do something. Now, in past tutorials, I have usually put our code here, although it's actually a bad habit and poor practice to put this in the update function as it calls it every frame. So it's a little better if we go ahead and put down direction check as a separate method, and we'll create that method out here, out of the update function. So come down a couple of lines and create void direction check and in our direction check, we want to run a couple of if statements. The first being if input dot get axis, open parentheses, quotations, mouse x is less than zero and input dot get axis, quotations in parentheses, mouse y is less than 0.15f and input dot get axis parentheses and quotations mouse y is greater than negative 0.15f well if that's the case then we want to access our player animator variable and set trigger attack right. So what this actually does is here where we're checking our mouse x axis, we are checking as long as it is less than zero. So if we're moving the mouse from the right to the left, well, then we want to do something. Although at times, if we leave it just that, our mouse will get confused because we're not ever moving in a straight line. So there are moments when we are moving along the y axis as well. And so this kind of creates a clamp and to ignore any sort of other interference. Okay, so now we're going to do a couple of similar statements here, starting with else if, in fact, we can actually just copy this whole if statement here and paste it after else. So else if input.getAxis mouse x is greater than, we want to switch that, and the rest will remain the same. Well, now we want to play our attack left animation. Okay, now let's copy this whole else if statement here and paste it down here. And so now we are going to switch from our x axis being the main focus to our y. So if our y is less than, or I'm sorry, is greater than, and we will switch these to being mouse x. And if this is the case, well, then we want to play our attack stab animation. Okay, now for our last chunk of code, we're going to copy that one more time, paste it down here, and we're going to change this to being if the mouse y axis is less than zero. Well, that means that we're moving our mouse down, so we want to play our attack up animation. Let's save it and go back into Unity because our script is done. All right, so now that we're back in Unity, we're going to go to our player object and add our attack manager script that we created. Now we need to set our variable, so we'll drag our player arms into our player animator, and now if we press play, it should work. So now that we're in our scene, you can see that our animation for idle is playing nicely, and if we go ahead and just press the mouse button without moving the mouse, nothing happens. However, if we move the mouse in a direction while we press the mouse, you can see our animations are playing nicely, exactly the way that we want them to. 
So that's actually it. That's all you need to know for creating a direction combat system in Unity. Thanks for watching. If you would like to request a specific tutorial, make sure you subscribe to my channel and post it in the comments below. Thanks.